Invasion Atlanta, GA. Biggest invasion in the whole USA. Two wrestling companies coming in hot to take the WWE down in one shot. I'm John Renton with a retro view of WWE Raw from July 9, 2001. Yes, the infamous and somewhat famous and also infamous edition where WCW and ECW become human centipede together to take down the WWF. Now WWE, of course, but man, WWF is all over this goddamn thing, hence this sweet shirt that my sister designed. I'm really happy that she made this one of my most prized possessions. And this episode really is memorable for the right and wrong and also wrong reasons. The Invasion Angle, as I said in previous reviews, because I'm retroviewing the entire Invasion Angle until the Raw after Survivor Series 2001, and maybe even to the end of 2001, because Vengeance 2001 was pretty goddamn good. But anyway, before we get to that, I mentioned the big stars just weren't coming, and even though there were some great talents in WCW and even the ECW contingent, they were never presented as a comparable force, because... Quite a few of these talents had been in WWE for a time, and some had been in WCW for a time, and they just kept trying to conglomerate them and blend them together and everything. It was like a cat's cradle and a silver spoon, little boy moon, and we're straight to the moon. But this episode was something else, and since it was in Atlanta, the former hotbed of WCW, we get recaps of the SmackDown antics, Taker getting beat down five on one, and then... So many signs in the crowd. I miss the days when there were so many signs in the crowds. I mean, maybe not when I was there at the live shows. Because sometimes security would have to tell the people, hey, put down your fucking signs, you goddamn idiots. People can't see. But it was cool to see it. I mean, because a lot of people, it showed a lot of passion, a lot of energy. <clears throat> Shane uh, versus DDP in a street fight. Because DDP had taken out Shane McMahon when he was beating down The Undertaker. And he was all upset at Shane McMahon. They were all upset. No, no, what the hell is going on? Undertaker and Sarah show up, and, you know, Shane, all due respect, but Paige is mine. Oh, okay, it's a ruse, because then Shane uh, gains Undertaker like 30 seconds into the match and sets a street fight, no DQ, and they beat the shit out of him. I'm glad they got rid of chair shots of the head. I wish they would in all of wrestling, because, look, I get it. You can protect yourself only so goddamn much by doing that, but in all seriousness, yeah, head... It, you get enough head trauma doing wrestling anyway. You don't need to give yourself deliberate head trauma. So, uh, Shane then sells for Sarah when she hits him with the kendo stick. And DDP hits a diamond cutter on her. One of the safest diamond cutters. I mean, DDP is a safe worker. I'm just saying that he made sure to take extra care of Sarah. Which, to be fair, you wouldn't want to piss off Undertaker. And Undertaker was all upset. And she was stretchered out, being taken to a local medical facility for possible neck injuries and anal bleeding. What? Wow. That will live on forever. I might actually have to retro-review that goddamn episode. Just, I think I have, didn't that happen to September 2011? Did it, it was like August or September 2011. I might just have to retro-review that. Uh, whatever. Anyway, DDP then takes uh, Taker's bike for a spin. Taker, uh, tinkering his bike, if you will. It's like tinkering. And then we get recaps of Spike suffering a broken uh, tibia or fibia. And he's out on crutches uh, later in the show. But yeah, I, I didn't catch that at all when I retroviewed that SmackDown, the previous SmackDown before this, as opposed to the previous SmackDown after this. That's not how previous worked. So APA took on the Dudleys in a tag title match. Uh, Farouk had an injured elbow or at least something where it's like, you know, it was like a Mo Vaughn arm guard. That's the shout out to any uh, baseball fans that remember Mo Vaughn. Seriously, it was like something straight out of fucking Mega Man. So anyway, we get power stuff. Um, you know, the usual fare that you would get from these guys. And later Spike shows up with a crutch while Bubba's trying to get the table. He, Bubba's trying to get wood, and he gets a crutch all over his back. Clothesline from hell, one, two, three. APA win the tag team championship. So, holy shit. Probably makes sense why they switch the titles, given what happens a little bit later. Vince and Austin are talking backstage about, oh, you know, what what's going to happen, all this stuff. Like, oh, you know, Taker and Taker's gone because his wife is uh, stretchered out at, you know, and being taken to the local medical facility. And then Kurt has gifts, but not for Deborah, because Deborah just gets shunned, um, you know, in every one of these segments. There are badges because of the cowboy hats. My gold badge matches my gold medals. God damn it, Kurt. The one bright spot of any of these episodes, even if the matches aren't that good, the comedy between Kurt and, um, you know, between Kurt and um, Austin and Vince, it's just so goddamn great. It's the Kurt comedy classic. Oh, that's not good. Ugh. So if you get that, you get it. So Austin then, um, you know, 
basically fires up Angle saying, hey, go beat up Booker T. You didn't last week, but you can this week. <laughs> it's like, you know, hadn't worked before, but why learn from past experiences? So then Albert takes on Rhino uh, for the Intercontinental Championship, and Heyman calls Albert the Moil of Misery. Mmm, just the tips. So we get a distraction. X-Pac hits a super kick on Rhino for two. Rhino does hit a nice top rope splash and hits a gore on X-Pac when he tries to interfere, but we get a scissors kick or just a pump kick. One, two, three, and Albert retains. Thanks for coming, Rhino. Gross. And then Angle uh, comes into Booker T's locker room. It was uncomfortable for everybody and says, hey, I challenge you for the WCW title. I challenge you to a duel. Smack. And okay, you're on. Hey, Kurt, you know, I know you looked ridiculous in your cowboy hat. What makes you think you have a chance against me? So uh, Kane is upset and is pounding on Regal's desk. And uh, Re Regal says, well, hey, Sarah's going to be all right. And then Taker was actually supposed to face Mike Awesome and Lance Storm in a handicap match. And Kane says, I want them. I want two men at once. Hmm. Boy, he really is the big red machine, isn't he? So then... Uh, it, that's the match that's going to happen, which is fine. And then Jeff Hardy takes on the big show. Trish shows up to root for Jeff. No dice. Alley-oop. One, two, three. In like two minutes. And then Trish kisses Jeff. Oh, you have your shirt ripped and you got alley-ooped and you got beat up. Here's a kiss. To be fair, Jeff was lucky. Anyway, Vince then tries to fire up Kurt. Can you, uh, and you know, Kurt's bending over and doing all this uh, stretching stuff. And Austin says, can you tell him to get his ass out of my face? And <clears throat> um, they do this whole... No, it's like, you're like Gilligan, I'm like the skipper. And then Austin does a revert rabbit season, duck season thing and, you know, gets a word like, well, that's fine, I'm Gilligan and you're the skipper, uh, uh, Angle says to Austin. Because, again, comedy, and it really works. Because they were injured, they found a way to get some really good comedic stuff out of this. Well, you're both on Team WWF. And then uh, Taker is also there. Jericho comes in and says, you thought I was going to take the title at King of the Ring and join WCW? No, and I went in on the team. And they said, well, think about it. Maybe you should probably do less infighting and then worry, you know, and worry more about the uh, impending invasion of all these, you know, great talents. There actually were some great talents. They just weren't featured right and nobody cared. So then Matt and Lita don't trust Trish. And it's going to be her and Lita teaming up against Stacey and Tori at Invasion in the first ever tag team bra and panties match. Man, women's wrestling sure has come a long way. I mean... Pretty, I mean, Lita was the best worker out of any of them, and even Lita, like, if you compare her <coughs> work to today, yeah, it's really hard to compare that stuff. But Lita could, you know, compete at least in one or two matches now. But yeah, Trish wasn't there yet, and Tori and Stacey were never wrestlers, and they admitted that. Stacey even turned down a chance to be the women's champion because she felt there were more deserving women. She was right, and credit to Stacey for recognizing that and recognizing, you know, that it would have been cool but she wanted more deserving women to get that. And I don't remember exactly when that was. I can't remember if it was 04 or 05, but good on her. So we then uh, have Shane firing up Booker T. He says, you have to retain the championship. And Vince, is Austin, Vince and Austin are firing up Angle. Then Angle talks about winning the gold at the Atlanta Games. Also, something else happened in Atlanta in 1996. Moving on. Um, so... Angle versus Booker, WCW title match. Crowd was hot at first. Shane interferes. Nick Patrick does nothing because WCW referee. Step spots later. Angle Angle fires up for a bit, but gets hit with the axe kick and then the spin of Rooney, which it's it's always amazed me that Booker could do that. I was always I remember thinking even as like a you know teenager that like you know early teenager he was gonna just spin right out of the goddamn ring. And he's just going to spin. It was going to be like a helicopter. It was going to be like Chun-Li's spinning whatever kick. I can't actually remember what the fuck it's called. <laughs> and she would, and Booker would just take people out in the crowd and just be like a helicopter thing. It'd be really cool. I was a weird kid, as opposed to the level-headed adult that I am now. So we get a uh, we get a ref bump. We get the angle slam. Um, And then Earl gets in and then gets pulled out by Nick. And then we get a ref fight. Shane hands Booker the title and he clocks him. And then Charles Robinson comes down and makes the count one, two, three. And you thought the WCW in the last year had way too much interference. And it only gets worse. <laughs> so, Scott Hudson interviews Tori and Stacy. Tori says she's been eyeballed by dirty old men all her life. As Scott, who I'm sure was a bit older than Stacy, was eyeballing her. To be fair, and I got nothing, nothing but respect for Scott Hudson. Don't blame for eyeballing Tori. I don't blame anybody for eyeballing Tori. And then Stacy says, um... We're going to prove that the WCW women always come out on top. Stop thinking about it, Zach. I know you're thinking about it. Stop it. Get some help. 
Also, the women they were thinking about. Never mind, I'm not going to say anything. APA offered to buy the Dudley's beer, and they said, Not now, ask us at the end of the night. Ooh. And then Kane takes on Storm and Awesome, but first, Jericho shows up in standard tag match. And Jericho gets targeted, hot tag to Kane. Dreamer, RVD attack, and then suddenly, Storm and Awesome join the ECW contingent, because ECW, because they had ties to ECW. You know, the ties to ECW, like Mike Awesome being owed a ton of money by Heyman, not that he was the only one, but I don't blame him for jumping to WCW, even though he was the ECW champion. Heyman should have been better with money, is me point. <laughs> so, Heyman and says, you want to know what this is? Because the Dudleys... Raven, Credible, Rhino, and, you know, and Taz, they run down, and they're like, we're gonna fight you off, ha-ha, no, bullshit, swerve, bro, and they, they join in on the assault, Heyman says, well, this whole invasion, we are the tribe of extreme, and they forgot that ECW exists, and we're here to remind them, so now it's ECW, and WCW, and WWE, and Shane uh, and Vince, you know, are talking. Shane says, we need to work together. You uh, you lost some guys. I lost two guys. I can't afford to lose more guys. Neither can you. Uh, let's take five of my guys, five of yours, one night only, and then Invasion will be on. But we need to beat back, beat back this invading force. Even though WCW is an invading force. Really complicated shit. Then Sky Tuhati uh, versus X-Pac for the Light Heavyweight Championship. It wasn't bad. I'm really glad that X-Pac got clean because you could tell that he was struggling at this point. I mean, thank God he did. But there were a lot of X-Pac uh, sucks chance. The worm was dodged and then sunset flip. X-Pac holding the ropes. The referee not seeing this even though he saw it. One, two, three. So then Vince fires up the WWE and WCW teams. Shane says, he'll lead the charge. Vince says, fine, you're personally responsible. So it's supposed to be show uh, Billy Gunn, APA, and Hardcore Holly, along with Chuck Palumbo, Sean O'Hara, Sean Stasiak, Mark Jindrak, and Canyon. Canyon should have been featured so much better in WWE. <laughs> um, innovative as fuck. Versus Shane, or with Shane, rather. And then the ECW contingent was Dreamer, Taz, Dudley's, RVD, Credible, Raven, Awesome, Storm, and if there was somebody else, I'm sorry. And Team WCW and WWF just brawl. They beat each other up. WWE, or WWF, sorry. You know, they said WWF so much, I'm back to calling them that. And they're just standing tall. And then the ECW team comes in. They glom, and then they take out everybody. And then Team WCW is like, okay, we're going to get the ring of that. How oh, is all a ruse? Second swerve in the goddamn thing. Wait, third swerve, if you count the street fight thing. And Vince is angry, and Shane says, I said I could never <coughs> compete with your checkbook, but I can outsmart you. I am personally responsible for the merger of WCW and ECW. The new owner of ECW is Stephanie McMahon. And the sins of the father are, you know, uh, are, you know, are, you know, being uh, showered upon us all or whatever. However, JR said it. He, there were a lot of lines that, that were like just thrown at us. So some of them, even though I just rewatched this, a lot of them are kind of blending together. But yeah, pretty memorable. And if anybody knows about being extreme, especially with some of the stuff she's done, Stephanie would, but you know, like being extreme bitch. But um, this was memorable. It's just, it would lead to the invasion pay per view that did really well. But then when fans realized, hey, the invasion is kind of shit because. They're overbooking the fuck out of this thing. Yeah, it didn't end up working out all that well. Look at SummerSlam 2001 and see how things were going. That cage match with DDP and Canyon versus the Brothers of Destruction. Oh, dear. Yep, I'm going to keep retro-reviewing this stuff. Why? Because it's fun and you guys enjoy what I review. Anyway, agree, disagree, what I said. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.